Hey guys, me again with another YouTube video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a fan-suggested assault rifle. Um, so, I'm doing a little bit of videos tonight. It's Friday night. I'm technically Saturday morning right now, but um, college is a real, real busy place, guys, so just bear with me. I might not be able to get content out like I used to be able to, like one video after the other during the day and stuff like that. It's really difficult, so bear with me on that. Uh, anyhow, today we're going to be taking a look at the APS Underwater Assault Rifle. It is a Russian assault rifle that was developed during the Cold War. Uh, the big idea was that the Russian frogmen needed a weapon that could shoot both underwater and above water. Uh, the traditional AK-47 does not work in terms of design because bullets uh, are not hydrodynamic. They do not go through water at uh, quick enough paces to kill people. Uh, you can shoot an AK-47 underwater. Uh, in fact, there's very popular YouTube videos of people shooting AK-47s underwater. The issue is when the bullet meets the resistance of the water, it stops really, really quick and um, does not do anything. Uh, so, Russia's weapon designers decided to build a specific weapon that fired these really, really large darts. Uh, so, the first look at the weapon... I don't know why these won't open. I can't, my photos app is not even working. I'm gonna have to open it with paint. So this is the APS underwater assault rifle uh, in its um, brown composite uh, design. Um, so what I wanted to, the reason I opened this was so that you guys can see it rendered and I also wanted to point out the magazine. The magazine looks like that because it has, from here down, it's just a giant spring. And then from about here to there is casings, actual bullet casings. And then from the front of that casing out to here are giant needles, is what they look like. They're hydrodynamic, they travel through water super quick, uh, and that's what actually kills. Um, so that's the rendered image. So now we're going to open it up in LDD. Um, this weapon does work above water. It does not work as well as it does below water, but uh, if you're really in a pinch, you can't really argue about it. So, yeah. So this is a pretty awesome design. I actually had a lot of fun building this because it's different, not the exact same thing. Um, I started with the pistol grip, worked up from there. Uh, it turned really complicated because some of the parts are three studs wide, other parts are four studs wide, and the top of it's two studs wide. Uh, I had to find all the tower or tires to make it look good, um, uh, different things like that. I had a time lapse of this. I had the screen recording software going. Uh, the I ended the build and then I closed out of um, LDD and I was like, okay, that felt really good. Time to go watch the time lapse. Opened up the time lapse and for about an hour and 45 minutes, which is the time it took to build this weapon, I had nothing but black screen. I was so upset. I did not get anything but black screen uh, the entire time I was building this rifle. So we're going to start with the stock and work our way forward. So this is what people call a wireframe stock. As you can see it loops around in the back down here and then up here you have just pin adjustments. Um, I don't really want to go for any complicated mechanism or something like that so just pull the pin, plop it through that hole, pull the pin, plop it through that hole grab the stock and move it up so that it fits within its holes. Uh, the stock wraps around the pistol grip as you can see here. Just like that. Boop, boop, boop. I like it to be in the middle because it's not too long but not too short. The pistol grip is the one that sits flush with the receiver. Just like that. Really cool. Uh, but I modified the back of it to be rounded so that it fit more comfortable in the hand. It's got all the necessary shaping on the front of it. Angles up when you get to the trigger guard. Trigger guard goes down and then boom, curves up like it should. Your trigger Why can I not turn the trigger? Let me turn the trigger. What the Jesus? Is that it? There you go. Trigger 
Uh, you can pull the trigger like you're supposed to, so that you're shooting it. Uh, this is a ambi selector. It's on safe. And then you can flip it on up to semi-auto, and then this is full auto down here. It's on both sides, so you can flip it back and forth. You got the necessary angles on the back here. Bricks turn sideways. The magazine release here, which locks in with the back of the magazine right there, that little brown bar that you see. Uh, something that was really cool to do was uh, this little detail on the magazine itself, because it kind of skins down right here, so that's a really skinny piece of the middle. So I was really happy when I was able to do that. Magazine release works, of course. Whoa, oh god. Just like that, you can unlock your magazine and rock it out. The magazine is connected to the weapon. That's not good. It means I cannot pull it out for you guys. Bottom of it is black rubber, so if you drop it on land, it doesn't completely shatter. It absorbs some impact. The main frame of the weapon itself is four studs. Uh, this is a screw detail right there. Main uh, thing is four studs. Then this part here is three studs, and then the top part here is two studs. So that was really complicated to do. Um, yeah, it was not the easiest of things. So you can, as you can see, this entire line here is three studs right there, and then the, where the circled top parts are, the semi-circle top parts, is two studs. Um, was not easy. Here's the bolt. Pretty simple bolt. Not uh, that much of a difficult design to do. You can't really see how big the shell ejection port is unless you're looking at the uh, rendered image. So you can see like the, uh, the darkness and all, all the details and whatnot is on it. Um, then the barrel, which started out as the bottom barrel, which is a 32 uh, million or meter long axle piece going through here. Um, it's got the necessary flarings on it that you see on the normal barrel. Comes down into the gas system here, which is cylindrical as it needs to be, and then the end of the barrel and the muzzle brake, or muzzle device, it's not really a muzzle brake. The front iron sight here which has the angles, and then the gas piston, which is just like that. A lot thicker than the normal barrel, and then the end of it here is thicker as well. And the front iron sight, like I already said. Sights, pretty much just like my different usernames. Pretty basic, nothing really to them. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the APS underwater assault rifle. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to comment, rate, and subscribe for more videos similar to this one. If you guys want to see this model and more, don't be afraid to check out my website at bluejaythemeister.weebly.com. I try to update it as much as possible when I get any free time. I haven't had much free time lately, so I apologize. It's not been updated uh, in a month, I think. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, for the person who suggested this, you're welcome. Thanks for suggesting it. It was pretty fun to build. Uh, more suggestions will be on the way. The DSR-1 is built and ready, uh, literally. I, mean, I might as well show the uh, rendered image of it. The funniest thing about this rendered image, even though it's not opening, is... I didn't make a trigger on this weapon at all when I rendered the image. I don't even think I've gone back to put the uh, trigger on it, so... I guess when I do the video of this, it probably still won't have the trigger on it. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to comment and subscribe for more videos similar to this one. I'll see you later. Bye.